realize what these represent. And they're starting to watch and see who are wearing them because they want to see how you're going to move throughout the day. Bring it out. Some people don't wear fringes because they know they're doing wickedness all day long and they don't want that to be associated with who they are. But that can't be named amongst you. The way, and the way to purge that out of you, bro, get around like-minded men. Because what we do, we hold each other accountable. Yeah. It's an old saying in the world, right? The same thing that make you smile or make you cry. Yeah. All right, so you want black men to be in order? Yeah. Hey, the only way yeah. we're going to do it is by the Bible. All right, and it's come, it comes order and structure behind that. All right, holler my officer real quick. Hey, my brother, so come here. Let me holler at you real quick. All right, so you say you know that you're Israelite, right? And right now, like we was talking about, we are in the Feast of Unleavened Bread right now. So with you knowing that, this is what you need to do. Give me um, Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. All right, so now you may have been, actually, no, let's get um, Hebrews 10 first. I'm going to show you this, because how long, you said you've been knowing about six or eight months, right? How did you learn that you was an Israelite? All praise to the most high. So you've been following, all right? You've been following. Shout out Tuesday. You watch that thing. It pricks your spirit, and you're like, you know what? That is us. We are the Israelites. So now, this is your next step. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So now, you know that you're Israelite. You've seen Bishop. you learned the history. Now, it's no coincidence that you're seeing us out here. So your next step is to be come to the school and congregate on the Sabbath day. Because once you start doing that, you'll start knowing the proper times of when to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. The proper times of when to start keeping New Moon and all these different things, right? That's your next step. Because, hey, give me that where it says, uh, Walter in the two is better, Ecclesiastes 2 is better than 1. I'm going to show you this because, hey, it's one thing to know, but you can't do it by yourself. Yes, sir. It's a lot going on in this world, bro. You cannot do it by yourself. Watch this. Read you got. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm -hmm. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Mm -hmm. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. So what's, what you're going to realize is us brothers, when we on the like mind, when we are coming out of the scriptures, reasoning out of the scriptures, there's safety in that. Because something I might not know, my brother going to know. Something he might not know, another brother's going to know. What we're going to do, we're going to build each other up to that point where now we're starting to correct each other, hold each other accountable. Because you look out in this world today, the black man is not being held accountable by anybody. He damn sure is being held accountable by himself. All right, so this is what we're about. This is what the importance of congregating is. So what you need to do now, now that you know that we are actually in the midst of these other living breads, get Psalms uh, 119, verse 59. I would, what I would do if I was you, bro, I would go home immediately and get all the living out of my house. You may not know it from the start, but now that you know while we're in the midst of Feast of Eleven Bread, get that stuff out your house, bro. And right now, you can start becoming that new law. Read what you got. Psalm 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. This is the point right here. Read. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. King David said, I made haste and I delayed not. You Now that we're telling you right now, we are in the midst of Feast of Unleavened Bread. It started last Monday night. All right, so go home. I'm going to go home and follow you, get all that stuff out, and keep this day right here and start fresh. Start fresh right now because now that you're knowing, you're learning what to do, now it's going to be up to you to actually apply that to your life. You know what the importance of getting all the living out your house is? Read. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So like you said, Christ represents that sacrificial lamb, our Passover, that was sacrificed for us. What this leaven represents is a sin. 
sin that's within us that we need to purge out of us to become that new love. All right, because think about this. If you're going into something new, something fresh, are you going to, are you going to want to bring your old characteristics into that? It attained it. You're exactly right. That's why Christ said, get that leaven out of your house. You can't be keeping a feast with the malice of, uh, of, with the unleavened brand of malice, of hatred, of lying, all these different things that goes on in the black community. That's why he tells us, purge out all that old man, all that stuff we've been doing for 25, 30 plus years in the world. Now that we're learning that we're Israelites, now we have to start moving like a man of God. We got to purge that stuff about us. Is it more on that? Reach out. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. With sincerity and truth, I want you to think about this. Think about the black community today. It said if, if the black community knew about Passover, if the black community knew, and you know what, we got to purge out all the malice of hate, all the malice of uh, wickedness, all these different things that is all itself against God. If we knew that, don't you, what do you think that would do for the black community? It was uplift, uplift us, because now we're starting to think on more of a godly level, to where we, you know what, I'm not going to deal with my brother with you like I've been doing all this time. I'm not going to go out and shoot somebody down because I don't know how to handle my emotions. This is what's, this is the type of stuff that's going to benefit the black community. But when we tell them Jesus Christ is a black man, and everything we learn come from this man, our people don't realize that. So we go in year by year, day by day, with the old malice that this man has taught us. So this is the importance of purging out all that old leaven. All right, let's get up. Uh, yes, sir. No, that's not working. That's you doing godly, brother. That's you doing exactly what the commandment said to do. All right, so get that stuff out your house, bro. Because look around. Our people are bugged out, man. Our people are bugged out. We need it. It starts with us. Once you start getting yourself in order, now the next man going to look at you and start getting himself in order. All right, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Hold that. We'll come back to that. Actually, read that first. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. And this is a part of getting the 11 out your house. This is going to be a test for you. Because, yes, it's supposed to be out of our physical house, but it also represents getting sin out of our mind, out of our daily actions. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So there's a divine order. It goes God, Christ, man, and woman. You've been watching this for about six to eight months. You know what the scriptures say about what we're about to bring out. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So what that's saying? Read one more time. Verse four. Every man praying or prophesying, Having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. It says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. What's that mean? Yeah, you know. But that, so what should you do to get that leaven out of your, your spiritual house? So what's one step you can take right now to apply this scripture? Take it off, my brother. All praise to the most high. It's that simple. So this is a part of purging that old man up out of you, bro. All right, so that's one small step. Watch this. Get, now let's get uh, 2 Corinthians 5 17 first. Because, like I said, what's, what right now, what we're teaching you and how to move to the next step, this is what you are becoming. Read. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. That's a part of putting that old leaven away. It says, once you become in Christ, once you start learning who you are and how to build yourself up, you become a new creature. You become a new love. You're not supposed to take those old ways into that new lifestyle. All of us men that are in, up, up, up here, bro, we had things in our former lives that we had to let go. We had to cut that stuff off to become that new creature in Christ. You can't put old wine into a new bottle because, like you said, it attained it. All right? So now, these are the steps you got to take. So first and foremost, let me ask you this, bro. What you wear the chain for? Oh, no reason. It's just the lion on there. Okay, I'll praise this. What y'all be from? From the child of Judah, all praise to the Most High. All right, so now, let's get another commandment. Let me show you, because we showed you first, you got to start congregating. Because that's how you're going to start to learn and start to build yourself up. Next, you got to, since we are in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, get all the leaven out your house. Right? Now, let's get Numbers. Let's get Numbers. Read this. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes 
in the borders of their garments. So next up it says you're supposed to wear fringes in the borders of your garments. You know what fringes are? What's fringes? All crazy, so now that you know your fringes, now you gotta start wearing them things. What's the importance of wearing fringes? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Reach that level. But there's going to be some who's going to proudly wear their if they fringes every day because this is what God told us to do. Read Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven bro you don't you, you don't realize that there's people there's people that come up to me at work bro in all other places they check to see if i got my fringes on people i never even knew was paying attention to me they would say oh man i'm just trying to make sure you got your fringes on today that's because they know people are starting to realize what these represent and they're starting to watch and see who are wearing them because they want to see how you're going to move throughout the day. Bring it out. Some people don't wear fringes because they know they're doing wickedness all day long and they don't want that to be associated with who they are. But that can't be named amongst you. The way, and the way to purge that out of you, bro, get around like-minded men. Because what we do, we hold each other accountable. When somebody's going off, we're going to tell them, hey, bro, you need to watch this because that's going to lead you down the wrong path. All right? So, bro, you've been, it's time. It's time to come in, bro. Thank you. All praise. So, what your next step should be? Come to the school today. Yes, sir. We're gonna be in the school at three o'clock. You come today and start learning who you are and how to build yourself up. All right. So, hey, what you gonna do? You gonna come to the school? All praise to the Most High. That's right. Hey, that's gonna take a minute, bro. But I don't, I don't eat too much flour, but I got, I don't eat too much cereal. But yeah. You know, I got everything that rises. I'm about to go take out the crib. But basically, all praises. Yes, throw that stuff away and come on to the school, all right? Well, I'm going to give you one more thing, all right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So this is what written in a, in a ma masculine way, talking about us, right? We're not supposed to look on a woman to lust after her. In the same way, it applies to the women. So one thing I would, I would suggest you do when you go home, put on a regular t-shirt, bro. Because you don't know what some of the sisters in the body are dealing with. They could be dealing with lust, and we don't want you to be a stumbling block unto them. The same way you shouldn't want to be a stumbling block unto them. All right, so that's one small thing you can also do, all right? Put on a regular t-shirt with some sleeves, and you'll be good to go. All right, because we, we want to be that example, like I said, to everybody. And we don't want to be a stumbling block to our people. All right, so that's one thing. But, hey, come to the school, bro. That's the only way you're going to learn who you are. That's the only way you're going to take yourself to the next level. Right. All right? You're showing that you that you want it, you want this. All right? By taking your hair up on, by, by realizing that yeah, I got to go home and get all this living out the house. But, hey, first, uh, first Samuel is 2 and 3. This is what God said. All right? Because we hear this we hear this all the time. I'm not saying it's going to be you. But we have brothers and sisters come up to us all the time. Hey, man, I'm coming to the school. I'm so glad I found y'all. I'm so glad I ran into y'all. Watch this. Read. First Samuel 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Mm -hmm. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And by him, actions are weighed. 
God said, by me, actions are weighed. So your actions are gonna show exactly who you are. All right, so sir, hey, what's your name again? Deron. Deron, I'm also like him, bro. I hope to see you, bro. I hope to see you, all right? We are the Israelites, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's time for us to come out of this captivity, bro. Right. Once you realize, hey, these days are getting shorter. That's right. Time is speeding up, bro. It's right. all prophecies starting to be fulfilled. Right. We have earthquakes everywhere, bro. Right. Places that ain't never had an earthquake before. We have a, uh, volcanoes erupted. We have a mass um, uprisings of all different countries. Coliseums getting shot up and burned on fire. Hey, it's, the time is getting close, bro. So don't delay. Don't delay. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So get with uh, one of my officers right here. They're going to give you a little bit more information. All right? Three o'clock. Hope to see you, my brother. Hope to see you. All right. What's up, nation? Nation is men leading by example.